Joe Perry Crook has been a speaker, teacher, life coach, and best selling author for over 25 years. He specializes in teaching people the benefits of living a life of gratitude, specifically using the Daily Gratitude Journal. He's the author of the book, The Daily Gratitude Journal Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and Gratitude Nothing's Cool. He was recently featured on New Day with Margaret Larson on King TV and Jack Whitman on KIXI Radio. With over 30, 350 gratitude videos posted on YouTube. I've only seen 10. Sorry, I've got a few more to go. Uh, 38,000 viewers have seen his message and he is now considered a leading authority on gratitude and how living a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. Please welcome. Thank you, Brian, and also thank you, Chelsea. I uh, spoke at a group uh, a couple months ago, and Chelsea was nice enough to uh, refer me. And as I was telling her this morning, I always really uh, rely on referrals. And in fact, when I'm done, I've got some flyers over there and business cards and so forth. And it's always something I really, really appreciate. Uh, so let me start with, uh, by show of hands, how many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? Wherever I go, it's generally about 80 or 90 percent. And somebody pointed out to me that, you know, what happened in 2008, it's not just personal family losses, loved ones, that kind of things. It's businesses, it's companies, it's 401ks, it's houses, it's all these different types of things that happened to us. For my loss, the pivotal day for me was September 29th, 1998. It was a Tuesday. I woke up and I looked over in bed and my wife wasn't there. I thought, well, that's strange. I wonder where Dan is. And so just as I go get up to look for it, it's about 6 or 6.30, Connor comes in, my four-year-old, and he goes, where's mom? I don't know. So we walk down the hallway, and just then Kyle comes in. Kyle's 14, my older son. So we're all kind of baffled here, and we walk down the hallway, and we look downstairs, and down in front of the washer and dryer, here's Dana, face down, kind of curled over. So we know something's wrong. So we go running down there, I turn her over, and there's stuff coming out of her mouth. It didn't look good. I put my hand on the back of her back, and it felt warm, so I thought, well, at least she's not dead. So Connor starts crying. I send Kyle upstairs. He calls the police, and within a matter of minutes, there's probably 15 to 25 different fire, police, aid, all these people in our house, and they've got the wires and the paddles and that thing going like this to have her out on the floor. Most surrealistic thing I've ever been through in my life. So as they're working on her, anybody who's gone through this, and again, I speak to groups from 15 to 1,000, and so I always know there's a percentage that have, have gone through something like this, sometimes higher than I wish it was. But one of the things I notice is that time loses all measure. And I noticed that I thought it probably five or ten minutes had passed and this fire person comes up to me and she's just a little short fire person and she says, uh, Mr. Brooke, we've been working on your wife for an hour and a half and we still don't have a heartbeat. Do you want us to continue? And right then I thought about the fact I don't think ever before in my life I had to make a life and death decision for somebody. And I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. And what made it so challenging for me is that wasn't the first thing that ever happened to me. That was by far the worst. But I'd already lost my mother when I was younger to cancer. My father was a very prominent attorney in Seattle. He committed suicide. And it just went on and on and on. I graduated from Queen Anne High School and this grandma Husky too. So I'm listening to you guys talk about the state and everything. It was so exciting. I wasn't there last week. but. It's just, I'm so excited for them and for the school and everything. But, but I graduated from Queen Anne. Two of my best friends were killed the night we graduated. It just went on, Vietnam. And so what I noticed is over time, I thought, what am I going to do about this? And we could go around. I was telling Brian, I had the opportunity last night to speak to 35 recovering addicts at a church in downtown Seattle. One of those life-changing experiences. They were, it was a men's group, so it was all men. But it didn't look that much different than a lot of us and hearing these stories. So we could go around the room and we could hear all these stories and each one of you I'm sure could tell some story of loss or trauma or something that's happened to you and how did you deal with it. So I decided right then that it kind of depends on how you look at stuff. It always depends on how you look at stuff. So just as an example I'd like you to all stand up if you would and just it's a little early in the morning so just get a little stretch and just take your right arm and just extend it to the ceiling and start turning it in a clockwise manner. 
Now, if anybody's clock challenged, <laughs> there's a clock there. And I see there's a clock there. So this is clockwise, right? So, so keep it going clockwise. Feel that nice stretch. Now start to slowly bring it down, keeping it going clockwise. Bring it down to about your forehead, your eyes, your chin, your chest, and now get it about to your waist. Now what direction is it going? Very good, Kim. Counterclockwise. Okay, you can sit down. That's, that's it for the, the participation exercises. So, there's... Getting the kids married off and the counterclockwise, clockwise, you know, what can you say? You never know. There's always somebody. I have some fraternity brothers that are PhDs that have come up to me and said, can, you know, we're good friends. What, how does this thing work anyway? <laughs> Do people change on the way? I said, no, you're looking at it from the top and from the bottom. Seriously? And so there's always somebody, but it's just, it's my way of pointing out, it depends on how you want to look at it. Now we've got glasses of water here and there's glasses half full, half empty. There's always that aspect. But what it really made me realize is that I had a choice. And what I noticed is two or three days after Dana died, I walked up on the deck and again, I just know because people come up and talk to me afterwards and tell me their stories and it's so powerful and I just can't wait to hear these because they want to share. This is what happened to me and this is why I understand your piece about gratitude or what have you. But I walked up and, and shock puts you into this numb state. You don't know if it's a, a dream, a nightmare. That's what the body does when we go through things like this. So I walked up on the deck, a little small deck we had in the back of the house. It was about two or three days later and I realized the shock had started to wear off. I knew it was really true. And I stood there and I looked out at the blue sky and I thought to myself, now I understand why people kill themselves. I get it. Because I've been through so much stuff and here's Connor who can't stop crying, he's four. Kyle's having a difficult time and I'm, I'll never forget kind of pinching myself going, I'm just skin and bone, I'm just a little guy, just trying to do his best and I can see why people go, this is too much for me. So I figured I'm gonna have to figure out something that's gonna help me. But in the meantime, I'm going to have to realize that you can't give up. And we've heard the Winston Churchill thing, never, ever, ever, ever give up. The gal swam the channel the other day, Diana Nyad. That was one of the first things she said. I think she's 64, 65. Unbelievable. I've heard her name for years. But she made it. And that was one of the first things she said, don't ever give up. But I realized that you have to decide. Each one of us has to look in the mirror and think, am I the kind of person that can do this? Well, Dana had been addicted to prescription medication. We met at Nordstrom. She was 38 years old, incredibly young. But she got hooked on this crap, Vicodin, Oxycontin, all this. You've read all about it all the time. Well, before she passed away, she had gotten arrested for prescription fraud. I've never seen a person with handcuffs in my life. I just hadn't. Horrifying to see my beautiful wife in jail. Then she went into treatment and is actually in Everett, just not no, far from here, uh, Providence, a couple different times. But this doctor calls me and are you David Brook? Yes, I am. I'm Dr. Dickinson. I need to talk to you about your wife. Come on in, sit down. And he points out to the room over here and he says, see all those people? He's a doctor, she's a lawyer. This is trying to make you feel better because these are everyday people that are afflicted by addiction. And I said, well, that's super, but I only care about the blonde gal. That's my wife. And he goes, let me tell you about her. One in 20 will make it back to a, norm, 